If there's no helicopters flying by, well, that's when you really get worried. <laughs> What's going on, beer lovers? Welcome to another episode. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jacob. And today is a very special episode. We're actually reviewing several beers from Hen House Brewing in Sonoma County, California. These were given to me by a beautiful young lady named Anna. Uh, 16 ounces of Seattle. I'll make sure I put her Instagram tag down here somewhere. Um, she works at Hen House. She's also a fellow craft beer lover. And when I went up north to go to Bruby's Fest, met up with her and she greeted me with all these wonderful cans and told me to try them out. So next time I go up north, if I like their beer, it'll be a place that I visit. So I'm really hoping I like them because, uh, yeah, she, she speaks very highly of them. So I'm excited. Jacob, have you heard of Hen House before? I've heard of them and this is where I have a confession to make. I did buy one of their beers, which I thought was just called Hen House IPA. Apparently I opened it upon a drunken evening. I don't <laughs> remember much of what it tasted like. I think I thought it was okay? Possibly? This will be a new experience for me as well. Oh man. Yeah. Well, all I gotta say is I've been holding on to these, and I'm super excited to crack them open. Uh, so you ready to get started? Yes. <laughs> All right, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go back and forth picking a different beer at semi-random. We can kind of see what they look like on the back, but we've never tried any of these, so it's still gonna be random. So, awesome. uh, Jacob, you wanna go ahead and start and pick the first one? I am actually definitely ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a collab uh, with Shady Oak Barrel House. Now I know Shady Oak because typically they do mixed fermentation beers, not IPAs. Uh, and fun fact, uh, the owner of Sour Cellars and the owner of Shady Oak are like cousins twice removed maybe or something? Like somewhere there's a family tree related in there. Alright, so I'm gonna pick Ski Mask Party, a tart pale ale at 5.8% and the Lovely artwork on this beer did such a great job of distracting me from telling you that. that I... <laughs> One of the cool things with Hen House is they kind of feature the, I'm guessing it's a, is it a hen or a rooster? I don't know the difference. I'm guessing it's a hen though, because Hen House, but they have it in like every single one of these in just really creative ways. <laughs> All right, let's dig into this, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, okay. A little fruity on the nose? Yeah, a lot more fruity than I was thinking it was going to be. Hmm. Oh, there's that tartness. Oh. Oh, this is nice. Huh. Whoa, not what I expected. No, not at all, but... It's good. I gotta say, I... I can easily drink this by myself. <laughs> Tart pale ale. It, the tartness is, for me at least, very light, very minimal. Oh yeah, it's super it's mild. just a hint of it. Um, this is just straight up a summer beer. Like, mm -hmm. barbecue with a couple of these guys. Oh man, like, you need to take it camping maybe even? This is like at the beach, like, this summer. Man, that's <laughs> such a... I love that craft breweries now are just really just throwing all kinds of weird shit out there and mixing <laughs> beer styles around and man this is uh you know it's it's got a little tart and a little funk to it but it's still like your typical pale ale but somehow that like tart funkiness kind of mellows out the hot body and it just creates like this rich light bright refreshing beer i mean you said it perfectly this is something I want to have out by the pool during summertime. I knew John wouldn't want to be a part of this episode because they're basically all IPAs. <laughs> Good old Jacob coming in for the save. We got this. <laughs> well, I'm going to pick the next one, and this beer I actually have had my eye on since I saw it. It's this beautiful one with all the freaking fruit all oh over my it. Oh, God. 
This is called Juice Enthusiast IPA. This is 7.5% and it's got that hen on the front and it's just literally surrounded by strawberries, kiwis, orange, lemon, pineapple, apples, <laughs> bananas, mangoes. Okay, but on this note, uh, let me draw your attention to the head of the chicken, or the rooster. Uh, there's a nice uh, cut in half orange right around the head, basically like uh, a saint illumination. Yes. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Once I'm... again, whoever the artist is, you did a great job. Well, you did a great <laughs> job because me just seeing the can art made me want to drink this. It's a nice... Oh, look at that head, too. Yeah, Jesus. buddy. Yeah. That's nice to look at. <laughs> yeah, it's just like this dark orange golden color. Oh, that is pretty. The head is nice and soapy. That smells pretty nice, too. Oh, yeah. Oh. Just combination of fruit juices in there. Some tropical, some citrus. You actually get a lot of the malt out of it as well. Yeah, I was going to say like an intense juicy fruit. Oh. All right, let's dig in now. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Whoa. Hmm. Well, that hit me after. <laughs> yeah. The finish on this is so bright. Hmm. Hmm. There's actually a lot of malt body to this. I was expecting this to be nothing but a juice bomb. Uh, you actually get really good malt characteristics out of it. I get more citrus than I do tropical in the body itself. But I think what you were about to say is the finish is really where it comes out. It yeah. tastes like I just bit into like a bunch of starbursts. <laughs> like just starbursts on my tongue right now. Uh, wow. Fantastic. This is, I feel like it's been a while since I've had a beer uh, that was this, mm. like in this particular range of fruitiness. Um, lately I feel like we've been having those really tropical hazy IPAs or we have really piney, you know, west coast or like really orange citrusy something. This is a little bit it's different. Maybe because there's so much of that malt meal yeah. with the fruit. Um, but it works. For me, yeah. it's something that I can definitely see. I can probably have two of these right in a row and be fine. Uh, well, in terms of palate, I don't know, mentally. 7.5%? Like, <laughs> uh, like percent uh, start, yeah. start crossing the line. Um, <laughs> but I feel like it's just a very easy to drink, but not so light that I feel like I'm drinking nothing, you know? Like, there's a lot going on, but it, like, I feel like it wouldn't wreck my palate at all, yeah. you know? It's just not going to. Um, I'm a fan. Yeah, I like this one a yeah. lot. Um, I don't know why, it reminds me of breakfast cereal. Like, the fruity breakfast cereal. The oh, malts and the okay, wheats and stuff like okay. like like tricks or yeah. um, tricks. No, you're right. Yeah, tricks. I, I feel like maybe it's tricks that I'm getting just because there's a combination of like citrus, tropical fruit, like, but you're still getting like that that oaty, weedy, malty kind yeah. of characteristic yeah, like, to the, it. The, the tricks, fruity pebbles. Uh, what's the other one? Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops or like uh, the Captain Crunch. Yeah. Fruit Captain Crunch. Crunch Fruit berries. berries. Crunch berries. Yeah. Crunch berries. Kind of that realm. Yeah. <laughs> It's really good. 7.5, yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> On to the next. All right, we're ready for the next beer. Jacob, it's your pick, what's up? Damn, all right. This is really hard to pick because just based off the hops, they all sound really good. Um, but you know what? I'm going to have to go with Deep State. Because of the name, um, someone there I like your sense of humor. <laughs> uh, but Deep State is an IPA at 6.2% that contains Citra and Amarillo hops. So those are two hops I really enjoy. Yes. And besides the name being great. The, uh, this another is really... awesome can label. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> oh, man. 
we're going to have to post lots of photos and pictures of these yes. because, once again, I'm just really enjoying the artwork. Um, they have a good sense of humor. Yeah, you, you know, their, their goofy sense of humor reminds me a lot of Noble. Uh, just <laughs> how overboard they're willing to go just to crack a joke. Yeah, especially um, wow, the later beautiful. Noble cans, I would say. Wow, this has got a beautiful color, guys. Holy crap. What's the ABV on this thing? Oh, wow, yeah, this is 6. nice. 6.2. Oh, smell it. Smell that. Mmm. I smell passion fruit. Oh, yeah. Wow. That little funky odor, you know, that passion <laughs> yeah. fruit odor. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. This is... If Roshni was here, she'd have a field day with this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's those kind of hops. It's definitely yeah. the Citra is doing something weird. Doing some the... real magic, that's oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> and, and the um, color, man. Look at yeah, that color. I like this. This is much more of a pale um, gold yellow color as opposed to the Juice Enthusiast was much darker. Yeah. Um, I usually like the more pale gold because, I mean, to me that reminds me of Monkish and that's a nice spot to be in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, let's get into this. Alright, man. Yeah. Cheers. Whoa. Oh. So I got a lot more earthy pine in there. Not not pine, I'm sorry. I got a lot more like just overall earthiness, like herbaceousness. That's interesting. I I think I'm hit by oh, I am they are at least for this one, they have nailed that pillowy soft mouth. Oh yeah, for sure. Um <laughs> that kinda caught me off guard. <laughs> And have a soul. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Making my nether regions tingle. <laughs> you got that pillowy mouth feel. <laughs> um, yeah. I I mean, I like Juice Enthusiast. Don't get me wrong. And I like the other one we had before. But this is like, if you can hit this mouth feel every time, you're, you're not going to have to worry about making money. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, this actually reminds me very much of like a just really solid session beer. Mm. When I'm drinking okay. it, it's it's yeah. light, it's pillowy, it's soft. You're getting just sweet, uh, juicy citrus uh, flavors out of it. You're getting the malts, but very very lightly. It just it's just super drinkable. You can knock it out. The cool thing is, as soon as you swallow, that back end is really where all the hops come out for me. Yeah. That's where I'm getting that yeah. earthy herbaceousness combination with a little bit of that citrus too, like very zesty citrus. And then it goes away. And you can drink some more. Yeah. Which is exactly what we're doing, yeah. isn't it? It's This is a, in a contender to be possibly my number one pick. But yeah. We'll see. There's still four more to go. So. And on that note, it's my turn. <laughs> all right. It's time for another one. We're reaching the halfway mark. Nice. Yeah, we're at the halfway mark. So I'm going to pick the next one, and I am picking Certified Independent AF IPA. It's 6.3%, and uh, yeah, it's got a freaking hen wearing a gold chain with a giant independent craft beer symbol oh as a pendant. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it because this independent craft beer symbol came out last year. Uh, just to tell beer drinkers like you are drinking independent and so for me I'm a big advocate for independent craft beer and the community and I love that symbol it shows me that I'm supporting craft beer so, and it reminds me of Flavor Flav. <laughs> it reminds me of Flavor Flav. I like to point out that so when that symbol first came out there was a lot of like weird kind of backlash people thought the symbol looked stupid and they were like, there's no room for it. Like, where am I supposed to put it? And just all this kind of like, kind of shit talking, basically. And here we have this can by Hen House. They have basically made the certified independent bottle logo as like a wallpaper, wallpaper to their beer. Yeah. So there is no mistaking this as an independent craft beer. Fucking hats off to you for going. Nah, we're gonna fucking run with this. Shit. <laughs> like once again, I'm. This artwork, it just, 
I like everything about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, it man. It's something that just hooks me. And they're coming out with new can releases right now. I Dang. follow them on Instagram, and it's like yeah. every time I'm just like, bravo. <laughs> like, it just gets better and better every time. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a whiff, shall we? Oh, yeah. That's actually a lot softer of an aroma. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Jacob apparently has never swirled a glass before. It's, it's, just be gentle. Just, be, just give it a little swirl, a little swirl a little swirl. swirl. This kind of a, I believe you know. This one actually kind of has like a darker head to it. It's not like that white soapy. A little head. bit, yeah. I mean, this Hair beer buddy. is actually a little bit darker too. Let me swirl this up. There you go. Uh, but yeah, that being said, the actual beer is definitely darker than some of the other ones we've had, so... It kind of reminds me of the uh, Juice Enthusiast a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But uh, actually now that head is looking kind of white, isn't it? It's got a nice smell Ooh, to it. Ooh, yeah. It smells pretty similar to the Juice Enthusiast, too. It's definitely in that range. I'm trying to figure out what that... Fruit is I'm picking up on the nose. Something kind of tropical for sure. Um, yeah. It's sweet though. Yeah. I like it. It's it's definitely nice to smell. Alright, enough sniffing more drinking. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Oh man, this reminds me of something that I haven't had in like probably over a year. <laughs> the, oh, what what is that flavor? I think what's happening is there's a nice malt sweetness and hop character that are so intertwined that we can't really separate them. Yeah, and that's, maybe that's something what it is. that just I know I've had from other beers, but I haven't had that in easily over a year like the kind of beer that does that is just something that i just haven't had uh recently um it's a bit more of an older style profile yes me. yeah like an old world style uh, kind of yeah like just ipa sure but not anything i would describe as hazy definitely mm. something that i mean you could describe as west coast but it doesn't I would just say older IPA style, not necessarily West Coast. Um, just pre-haze. Pre-haze, <laughs> I suppose. Um, we are dating in the pre-haze era. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, I, I feel dumb for describing it that way, but yeah, it, it's like an IPA but before the really crazy haze uh, came about, but not necessarily West Coast. So, you know, think a little bit more Central America. But definitely something was doing something interesting with hops that wasn't just about bitterness, but they didn't quite have the whole fruit juice haze factor going on yet. If that makes any sense to anybody <laughs> listening. <laughs> I'll, I'll make it very clear for you, at least this is my opinion. Uh, this is one of those big question mark beers. Um, it, That's clear? It, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean. It, in a nutshell, um, Go on. <laughs> it, it's very interesting. It, it's not like you have different combating flavors. It's just you can't pick them apart. Um, Jacob described it really well how the malt and the hops just kind of blend together in a way that like they almost seem like the same person. And that's why you can't pull them apart from each other. The hop bitterness, it's very interesting with this beer. The hop bitterness is actually more on the front end and you get kind of a sweet multi finish on the back end yeah which to me is just like ow my head hurts it's like inception man uh, <laughs> yeah uh didn't expect this um it's good it's just i feel really bad because i don't know how to efficiently describe this beer i can't pull out true flavors for you but it tastes good and that's really what matters so on to the next beer yeah <laughs> all right jacob it's your turn What's next? All right, I'm gonna go with the Single Hop Pale Ale, which is a revolving series of IPA. 
Um, kind of much like a Night Shifts uh, has their own revolving series, which is also really great. Uh, so I'm curious to see what they do. This is a 5.4% ABV um, called Stoked. And this particular Ooh. one is made with Citra, Ooh. which everybody pretty much fucking loves. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. That is like the go-to West Coast hop variety, in my opinion. Um, it's kind of cool that you mentioned Night Shift, because when I was there, the beer he's talking about is called One Hop This Time. And while I was in Boston, they had One Hop This Time with Citra. Oh, nice. Yeah. What a time. <laughs> I know, right? What a time to be alive. Ooh, look at that. This, yeah, this looks pretty great. I am now stoked to try stoked. <laughs> <laughs> See what he did there? Yeah, that looks really pretty. Yeah, really um, nice, bright So color. far, Hen House's IPAs have been looking just enjoyable. They look appetizing. And that's not something that I can say for everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, man, let's, let's get into the aroma. All right. Oh, yeah. You know, I feel like there's a pretty decent malt presence in this, too. Yep. Like, you don't just get punch in the face with Citra, you also get a nice kind of malt grain complexity. It's a good blend of just like that malty, like, sweetness with a little bit of orange, orange peel. Um, I'm actually getting a little bit of tangerine, too, off of it. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah. Am I crazy? Mm. Am I smelling the pine on the nose too? I wouldn't say that's crazy. Um, I will say is there's some kind of earthiness coming off of this for sure. Yeah, let's get into this then. All right, let's yeah. go. Mm. There you go. Wow. That is citric. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in all honesty. If you were going to make a beer that showcases different hop varieties, whatever base they're using in this is perfect because this beer is everything that I've ever known about Citra hops. You are literally getting every aspect of it from the bitterness to the fruity flavors to uh, like that citrus pithiness to even at the end you're getting just a little bit of that pininess. Yeah. Um, I will say that Unlike some beers that kind of trick us into thinking it's an IPA, this is clearly a pale ale. Like yeah. It's very light bodied. It's, um, you know, it's a pale. Like you'd be very surprised if this was an IPA. Um, it doesn't feel particularly boozy. It doesn't feel particularly heavy. Um, yeah, definitely pale. It's nice though because, you know, on on this kind of ABV range. I always feel like if they're adding some kind of hop variety that they want to stand out, you get all the hops and none of the malts. Mm -hmm. And the malt and hop balance is really good on this. And I think that's why the Citra just carries so well from start to finish, because the malts just kind of carry it along. You know, it just keeps it at a nice little balance, nice and even. It is really nice. This is definitely something that, um, Easily crushable, uh, which so is so crushable, <laughs> so crushable, <laughs> so crushable, bro. Let's go crush some beers, yo. yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I feel like we've said that at least twice now. Yeah, um, this is another one you can take kind of anywhere and be fine. It's just an all around good, hoppy beer that is perfect for any occasion. <laughs> On to the next beer. Well, I'm ready to pick another beer. How about you guys? Uh, we only got two left, so out of the two, I'm gonna pick this awesome one right here. This is TGI Simcoe's. <laughs> this is an IPA, I'm pretty sure. It seems like they're all IPAs. It's 8%. Let's find out, is it an IPA? That's a real question. I mean, it's Simcoe so hops. Real. <laughs> oh, got it. There's so much flair on this can, I just don't know where to look. It is a double IPA, which makes sense, 8%. So there you go. So now, Cellar I Maker. see Cellar Maker. Does that mean this is a collab? Oh, shit. Because I don't see anybody Guys, else. hold on. We got to run through these buttons real quick. I hate <laughs> to waste your time, but it's not really wasting your time. Um, 
cryo dust probably means that maybe they use cryo hops in here. Um, keep smiling means they were probably stoned while making this. <laughs> Just a guess. Um, freshness advisory, check the date. So obviously they're making sure that we drink their beer fresh. And then yes, cellar maker is on here as well, which could only mean that this is a collaboration with them, which is freaking awesome because I still haven't been to that brewery yet. How have you and not? I, well, because I've only been up in NorCal like twice in the last like year. Okay. So Fair. it's so hard to get up there. And on top of that, cellar maker, answer your emails, man. Anyways, uh, yeah, see you in San Francisco. Delicious double IPA, Citra, Mosaic, and Simcoe. Bam. Ooh, well, yet another uh, Hen House beer that looks really appetizing, yeah. yeah. Jesus, man. Uh, Hen House, you guys are getting that beautiful coloring down to a T. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you watching this, don't mind the helicopters. I live in Anaheim, California, and uh, right across the street from Disneyland. And uh, if there's no helicopters flying by, well, that's when you really get worried. <laughs> And don't call it Anna Crime for nothing. <laughs> Anna Crime! <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> what does this beer smell like? Ooh. <sighs> God. So yeah, you can really smell the um, Simcoe and the Mosaic on this, for me especially. Just nice fruity, slight tropical, oh, it's like sweet. Ooh, what was that? Jacob's married. I don't know what that is. Anyways, yeah, God, it just fucking smells like super inviting. It makes me get really excited. It's almost like walking into a TGI Fridays and seeing that guy from Office Space with all the flair. <laughs> you remember that? What a reference. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but I look at this and I think Lumberg and I think flair. Lumberg. <laughs> Yes, let's drink all the beer. Cheers. Mm, this is lighter oh. than I thought it was going to be. It's lighter, but it's really got a strong bitter uh, finish to it. Yeah, it definitely lingers on the tongue. The malt's help, though. The malt's help. Yeah. Wow, this is... You know what's tripping me out is each of these beers that we've had, like... John, you can talk all the shit you want, but an IPA is not an IPA is not an IPA. Like, and this is clear indication. I feel yeah. like everything that we're drinking, yeah. although it, we're all kind of in the same wheelhouse of, of beer style, it, this is unique to every other one. Um, fantastic malt presence, super soft, great citrus notes, great tropical notes. And it's really bitter at the end, but then like the malts just kind of like come back real quick and clean your palate right off. Yes, yeah, so like Jeff said before, as much as they've all been IPAs and all been hop forward, they're all different in their own way, and it's pretty obvious, especially after drinking one right after another. Rather than feeling like they're blending together, they st still. <laughs> he just squeaked. He, he just squeaked. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you guys should hear the sounds coming out of him, man. I wish this mic would pick this shit up. <laughs> Treatments for anal bleeding. Wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, sorry we had to take a big cut out of this. Uh, <laughs> This uh, episode, Jacob apparently is suffering from the hiccups. They're really bad, and Jeff made them worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just speak for Jacob. All in all, this is a really good beer. Fantastic balance. Great balance of the hops. Good bitterness. Good citrus. Slight, you know, like tropical aroma. But really, for me, just that maltiness really just carries this beer big time. Which is nuts, because for a hazy beer, usually all your focus is on the hops. But again, this is one of those beers from Hen House that just really stands out and says, I'm my own beer style. So, 
really good, uh, and we'll give we'll give Jacob a minute to uh, to recover before we drink the very last beer of the day. Jacob is healed. Oh, just in case you're wondering, thanks to my great Amazon Echo, it told us the answer through WebMD. He held his breath, chugged the water, hiccups gone. Mission accomplished. <laughs> actually worked, so yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> Crazy. Just in case you're all wondering what the cure for hiccups are, that seemed to work almost instantly. So I mean, Yeah, we'll see how long it lasts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so now we're down to the last beer. I was about to grab it, but this yeah. is your grab, so yes. go for it, Jacob. I will gladly grab the last one, especially because it is called Kubrick's Landing IPA at 7.2% in the honor of the great filmmaker Stanley Kubrick which I believe during this like month or two is the anniversary of uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. So, oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, shit. That, it's been, I think, like 50 years or something like that. I don't know, like some certain like anniversary of it. So if you haven't seen 2001 Space Odyssey, you should definitely do that. The beginning is slow, <laughs> but worth it. <laughs> definitely worth it. And also Stanley Kubrick is a great filmmaker. So We yeah. might be dating ourselves right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's crack this open. Final <laughs> beer. I can't wait to see what Kubrick has uh, in store for me now. Because it's usually a mindfuck. Um, <laughs> if, if you've seen any of his other movies, um, yeah. they're basically a great way to freak you the fuck out. So, <laughs> to put it lightly. Yeah. Um, great Christmas movie in Eyes Wide Shut, though. Yes. Uh, come Christmas, you should definitely watch that. Wait, Eyes Wide Shut? Yeah, Eyes Wide Shut. <laughs> Great Christmas movie yeah. for the whole family. <laughs> yeah, and, well, maybe not that part, but it's definitely a great Christmas movie. <laughs> oh, man. Well, first thing I want to comment on, again, is this head, man. This is, like, soapy. It's yeah. thick. Like, this looks like I'm about to wash my car with it. Like, <laughs> legit. Oh, man, that would probably wreck your paint. <laughs> yeah, guess. probably would. Um, but yeah, I'm curious, uh, has, has anyone ever washed their car with beer? I'm sure it's happened, but if you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd really want to know what happens to yeah, your car. What happens to your car when you <laughs> wash it with beer? Uh, that being said, man, if your car smells like this after, that'd be pretty great. I get a lot of rich citrus notes on this, uh, dankness, definite Ooh, yeah. dankness in there. It's first kind of dankish beer that we've gotten out of them. Yeah, they, they haven't been uh, too much for the dankness. They've been definitely more of like the fruit kind of citrusy on pretty much all of these. Mosaic, Moteca, and Mandarina Bavaria. Okay, all right. Those are the three hot varieties that are on this bad mm. boy. Um, What's the canning date on this one? Was this one of the ones that was oh. in March? Uh, no, this is April 17th. Oh, cool. So right. we're drinking it about a month later. Okay. Um, Not bad. Yeah. And yeah, it's, I mean, it smells great. It doesn't smell like it has gone bad, so. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm ready to get into yeah. it. Yeah. Cheers. Oh. Um, I don't know how it is for you, but. I'm getting a lot of the grain bill. I'm getting a lot of grain, but actually more than anything, I'm getting that dank resinous finish on it. Definitely the finish. And yeah. on the body, yes, I get a lot of grain. And I think I get a lot of that mandarina Bavaria. There's a lot of like just rich, super, super sweet, like tangerine citrus orange. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally like you took uh like a bowl of oats, and you just squeezed a tangerine into it and took a spoonful. Which sounds really weird and probably tastes really <laughs> gross, but this tastes good. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. Um, it's very pleasant. Um, I would say it doesn't really stand out amongst the crowd. Um, but that being said, it's not bad. Like it's, it's very mild, but in a good way. Like, it's kind of nice that it doesn't pop as much as maybe some of the other ones. It's, uh, it makes it very drinkable. All right, so we're going to finish this beer, and uh, coming up next, we're going to tell you which beer our favorite was.
Well guys, we've reached the end. It's time to tell you which one of these Hen House beers our favorites were. So, Jacob, I'm gonna go ahead and let you start. So, I'll be honest, I definitely was not expecting Hen House uh, to bring such a strong game to the table. <laughs> yeah. Um, not that I had a low expectation of them, I just kind of was expecting it to be a little bit more hit and miss. Um, some I would like and some I just wouldn't be a fan of or just would think were just okay. Um, there was probably maybe two that I thought were okay and everything else I was a pretty solid fan of. Um, I'm really wishing that I could go visit Hen House pretty soon now, and I don't, it's probably not going to be a good chance for me to, but now I'm really like, I need to pay a lot more attention to it than, <laughs> than I have been, yeah. and I was just genuinely not expecting that. Uh, that being said, my winner, which I called pretty early on, is still definitely going to be uh, Deep State IPA. There's just something about it that... Uh, I mean, even after trying all the other ones, it does right. Like, it's just something that I want to drink more of than the rest. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's the beer that wins for you. It's the one that you drink the most yes. of, right? So, that's definitely going to be Deep State IPA. Well, I'm going to agree with Jacob. Uh, I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, I did not expect to like that many beers. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, before meeting Anna, I had never really heard of Hen House. Like, literally, never heard of them. Um, maybe I saw their can on social media, but, you know, you see a thousand different can designs in a day, and you don't really think too much about it. Um, she definitely opened a whole new door for me on this. So, Anna, I got to thank you again. <laughs> You're amazing, and uh, thank you so much for sharing these beers. Um, for me, there wasn't one that I didn't like. Like, honestly, every single one of these I would drink again, and the fact that, I'm, that I liked all of them tells me that next time I'm in NorCal, this is a must visit. Like, Hen House, we're coming to you, we're reviewing you. Uh, Hopefully, and I'm sure you do, based on your social media, you're going to have a whole bunch of new beers for us to try, uh, and I will gladly try them. Um, when it comes to my favorite, it's really a tough choice because everything was so good and so different. They all stood out in different ways. Uh, Deep State actually was in my top two. Ooh. Uh, yeah, Deep State was oh, definitely right. in my top two. That was one I was like kind of on the fence of picking. All right. My favorite, though, has got to be Stoked. Ooh. It's going to be Stoked. And right. let me just explain All to you right. something. The reason, the reason why I picked Stoked is very simple. One, you can tell that this is a simple beer. Mm. They're not using a ton in this. They are really keeping it real simple. I can't imagine that their malt bill on this is really complex. And you know that they only use Citra in it because it's stoked with Citra. Where is it? Right here? Yeah. It's stoked with Citra. Um, the other thing is the ABV. So 5.4% tells me that I can drink a few of these. And if there's one thing I've learned since we started this whole Hen House thing is Hen House beers are not drink one. Hen House beers are, are, uh, are drink them all. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the only way to describe it. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for me, it's like if I'm gonna drink a Hen House beer all day long, which is exactly what I want to do, uh, it's gonna be this one because I'm not gonna get as fucked up. Basically, you just keep it simple. Yeah. Um, again, I just want to thank Anna for hooking me up with these beers. You introduced me to a brewery I've never heard of. You opened my eyes to some fantastic beers. Opened my eyes and my taste buds to some fantastic beers. Um, and you've shown me that uh, there's a brewery that I could never know about that would get me this excited. Um, when it comes to Hen House, it's not a matter of if, it's more of a matter of when. Uh, definitely gonna come see you guys in the future. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, we enjoy the support, it helps us like 
get our video up there and more visible to more people. Uh, please share the video with your friends. If you guys have been to Hen House, you know, like show what what we're drinking and be like, hey, you remember that beer? Whatever it may be. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, and speaking of Hen House, if you've been there before, if you've tried these beers, if you are one of the people that camp out for the can releases, let us know what you think. Um, until then, I'm Jeff. I'm Jacob. And uh, we'll see you again on uh, Let's Have Some Beer.